Well, Jack, go and bat your bank. Try that enough, same for to a different kind of same. Went off to college, but college turned out me. Couldn't get my master's in truth and loyalty. I said, whoa, let that music run. I said, the fuse and run Stock tell Jack to go and fetch your bank. Try that enough, say more to a different kind of same. Went off to college, but college turned out me. Couldn't get my masters in truth and loyalty. I said, whoa, like that fuse and run. I said, Let the fuse and run. Whoa, let that fuse and run. Whoa, let that fuse and run. Yo, what is up, 24-7 Buff Fandemonium? It is your boy, Swank. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and that means one thing, all right? It's time for the K-Gun Report. We have a very special guest joining the panel tonight. Our boy, you know him, you love him, the best voice in Buffalo Bills podcasting, Mr. Ryan Thomas from the Thomas Tech Sports Podcast. We're going to be talking about all the latest and greatest with the Buffalo Bills. We'll probably get into a little bit of free agency, a little bit of draft stuff. We got spin that wheel. We got Monday trivia, all sorts of crazy, amazing stuff. You know what? Let's uh, let's just hit this intro and we'll get right into it. Yo, here we are, and here it is on another beautiful Tuesday evening. What is up, our friends from the K-Gun Report? Right below me, to start off the introductions on the panel, you know him as one half of the gruesome twosome, my dude, Jerry Jared Reed. And look at how good he looks. Look at the clarity. The clarity. Wow. What's up, Jerry? I think we finally got there. I took the tape off that uh, the video camera, so now I'm clear. Dude, you told um, on yourself. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't hey, gonna bring I, it up. I always put it out on the table. I'm also rocking my favorite hat. Scott put a poll out there today. Or picture shows his favorite hat, so I got that one rocking. And I can't wait to rock this one on draft day. Not wearing Ooh. it yet, but I'm here to talk football with Ryan Scott and Swag tonight. Let's do it. Nice, dude. That was like a wrestling promo. Very cool. Right up top, next to me, right here is our boy, the other half of the gruesome, there you go, gruesome twosome, you know him as Scooter Magooter. What's up, Scott? What do you got? What's up, Swank, RT, and Jared? What's up, Buff fan base? Bill's Mafia, 24-7 Buff Fandemonium, FLX Mafia. Holy cow, we're all over the place, but we are one big Shout family. Shout out, City. 
We're one big family at the Bills Mafia. Can't wait to talk some Bills football. Some news. Got some news the last couple weeks. Um, I just want to throw this out there real quick, part of the Buff fan base. I joined um, uh, uh, Nickel City crew yet last week on Thursday with Rob Crippen. Had a wonderful time with them. Um, I know as a group, the fan base group, we're trying to uh, intermingle and uh, reach each other's shows, but had a blast, and we're going to have him on. It's going to be a good time. Had a good time. Thanks again for that, and let's get talking, boys. Yeah, hell yeah. We're trying to cross-pollinate, as our boy That's over it. at Nickel City said, and uh, yeah, you did a good <laughs> job, man. I, I caught it. It was good times. You uh, you guys, uh, and Dump Truck, dude. Yep. DT. Dump Truck. That's sick. the guy right there. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> um, right diagonal from me it's like hollywood squares or some shit right here down here you guys one of our favorites a dude that has been in our corner and a friend of not only the show but the three of us personally ever since we started was at the very first rager um we love him you guys love him it's our boy mr ryan thomas rt tell him what's up what is up, Bills Mafia? What is up, 24-7 Buffalo Fandemonium? It's good to be back with you three gentlemen. Good to be back with the three gentlemen. Usually it's just Scooter, Swank. I'm happy to see Jared on the panel today. So really looking forward to this. Let's get started, man. I'm, I'm pumped. Uh, I think what you're referring to is that we do another show in season called Sunday Sessions, uh, which is our pregame show here on the buff fan base network and uh a fun little tidbit about that show since jerry was telling on himself earlier i want to tell another jerry story we were trying to branch out before we even joined the fan base and do more shows so jared had this idea of doing a pregame show where he would answer questions and talk about inactives and all this stuff and the very first week he couldn't do it <laughs> I'm going to tell on myself even more. I had my two boys with me, and then we did go live for about three minutes, and I shut it off because they were not listening. So that's how it really went. So he didn't want any uh, any delete. evidence for the CPS case, I guess. <laughs> delete, 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 delete. Yeah. So then my boys, uh, Scott and Swank, took over and then asked you to join Ryan, and it took off. So yeah. It, things happen for a reason. It's perfect. Oh yeah, it's been fun. We're all, we're all we're all on a rocket ship, right? Yep. Jared's the first Jared's the first uh, gas fuel part that falls off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Jared's, the Jared's floating in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Jerry. I know. If it wasn't for you starting it, we never would have had so much fun doing it. And now it's going into its third season. So oh yeah. Craziness. craziness. Wow. Three years. I know, right? Nuts. That's crazy. Absolutely nuts. All right, let's get to the comments here because. You guys know, man, the K-Gun is your st your show as much as it's our show. And uh, we love the interaction. We love the comments, the questions. Get them flowing in here. If you got anything you want to talk about, put it in the comments, dude, and we'll throw it up there and uh, bounce it off the wall and see what sticks. You know what I'm saying? We got Mr. Paul Rossi talking about OGs from 24-7. Mr. Paul Rossi is one of those guys that was also at that very first Rager. Very few people he can was. say that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, Paul says, let's go, Buffalo. Missed you all with too many Tuesday night work meetings, just days till the draft. Hell yeah, buddy. Mm. We got Cookie. What's up, Josh Cook? Josh Cook, hey, Josh. also at the very first Rager, supplied the venue for it. Man, this is very topical. Very topical Rager night so far. What's up, Cookie? <laughs> we got up, Franklin. Okay. What's up, Jay? How you doing, brother? Oh, we got Lisa. Lisa Johns, dude. It's John. She's getting me all. Uh, Said, hey, Swank, with some hard eyes. What is up? It's probably she likes the long hair. Long That's hair, what dude. it is, the man. Locks, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Johns? How you guys doing? Lisa said, John and I won't be able to join you tonight because we're in North Carolina with family. No worries, Lisa. We love mm -hmm. you, and we hope you guys are doing all great. We got Birdo, another OG man. Holy shit, you know. He says, Hey, everyone. What's up, Birdo? What's up, Alberto? We got Uncle hey. James. What's up, wow. Mafia? What's up, Uncle James? We got Doug. Evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Hell yeah. Happy Tuesday to you, brother. Happy Tuesday. Hey, we got Lisa and Mike to cook. What's up, Lise? Saying, hey, guys. What's up? Mike V. What's up, Mafia? How you doing, Mike V? Mikey V. 
Let's see. Up, what's up? He said, it's 8 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now? God, I love it when they yeah. do the Marv, man. It makes me want to run through a wall, but not right the now. The Marvisms. Yeah, dude. It's beautiful. John John's reiterating that they're in North Carolina. We get it. You guys are in North Carolina. No. <laughs> what's it like down there right now? Yeah, it's got to be beautiful. Were they were they traveling down to the pro day, or was it just to see family? I think it was know. just to see family. Uh, okay. For, unfortunately, okay. John John's had a, a loss in his family, so oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're down there just Sorry celebrating, that. Ce- celebrating a little uh, life down there. Mm-hmm. We got Susie Norton. Hi guys. Normally check in from Ohio, but tonight checking in from NC. What's up? How's it going, Susie? Hey, what's up? I think she's in with that John John's crew. Mm-hmm. What's up, Susie? Let's see. John John's, thank you for all the prayers and condolences for the passing of my mother. We had a nice ceremony and we're able to get together and have a nice time down here in North Carolina. Hell yeah. I bet you there was at least a couple moonshine shots going around. I'm just I was just gonna say I'm gonna have a glass of moonshine for, for John's mom tonight. Hell sure. yeah, man. A full glass. <laughs> <laughs> A pint glass. Pint glass. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll have my beard back in probably an hour. <laughs> Lisa John says it's the beard, it's not the hair. So hey, I'm trying to get it. Oh. You know, get get my attention anywhere I can, obviously, right? Beard and hair. <laughs> we got Dr. Bruce in the comments. Go Bills. Dr. Bruce McKellar is a content creator for 247buffandemonium.com. If you go check out the blog section on our website, he has a great series called The Injury Report. I will continue to throw it back to that Matt Milano article that he put out. It was very good. Check it out. It's a great time. Susie says the weather is great down in North Carolina. I believe you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uncle Jim. Tar Heel was... State. What's that? Tar Heel State. Tar Heel. Tar Heel State. They might they might have screwed up my brackets, but dude, I haven't even watched. I, I don't I don't know. I haven't done brackets. I haven't either. Years. I haven't watched any March Madness. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Oh, let's see. We got the beautiful Ellen Larts. What's up, Ellen? How are you going? How are you doing? Let's go, Bill. She says. Ooh, apple pie this time. Yeah, guys. John John says he's got apple pie this time. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! I better bring a little bit of, up on uh, September here for the rage. Oh. Apple. Apple August. pie moonshine? Hell yeah, August bro. August thirty oh. August thirty oh. first is the rager. Yeah, yeah. Labor Day weekend. Yeah, don't forget that. Mark that in your calendars for all you four hundred and thirty three people watching right now. A, thanks for watching. B, we do a live preseason kickoff party in the Finger Lakes at Reinvention Brewing. Uh, the four of us will be there for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm committing Ryan Thomas to it, even though he mm-hmm. didn't say he was coming, but he's gone every year. I'm, c- I'm committed. <laughs> I'm, I'm invested. Yeah, he requests that day after the last one already. I saw it. And he's uh, yeah, he's for sure I asked committed. Jared, I said, when's the next one? And then Scott was like, August 31st, mark your calendar. <laughs> it probably sounded like this. When's the next one? Well, yes. well, next 31st. Hey, the 31st. Yeah. Hey. The Reed boys are going to start sending out save the dates like a wedding or something. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Let's see. Mike V, got to be honest, for that rivalry, I'm a Blue Devil with Tar Heels. Ooh, okay. I respect it. Sure. I respect it. Oh, here we go. Next week, Dr. Bruce says he's going to talk about Jones Fracture, a common foot injury, and one Mm. that may impact a certain draft pick, Kool-Aid. That that hurt Des Bryant, and it hurt Sammy Watkins Mm. big time. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. We got our boy, Chris Christian. Hey, my Bills brothers and sisters. What's up, Chris? How are you, brother? Thanks for joining hey, us. Hey, hey. Mike V says, damn, that's my sister's birthday. Well, where else would you rather be? Bring your right sister. Right here. Come on. <laughs> it's a family function. Reinvention oh, yeah. has amazing beers. We yep. have Retro Taco. They make an amazing taco display. Big shout out to them. They kicked butt last time they did it for us, and they actually wanted to come back. They unfortunately scheduled different last year, but they are back this year. Yeah. So we got food, we got booze, we got a Buffalo Bill celebration. I, I can't imagine having a better birthday party than that, really. So, Hell yeah. I mean, Kathleen Carlson says it's much better than a wedding. LOL. Go Bills. Hey, Hell yeah. Hey. I would say so. It's a great time, man. You guys should check it out. I didn't really plan on talking about the Rager a whole lot right here in the first 10 minutes of the show, but God damn, we're doing some planning. We got uh, some big commitments already. Uh, we got Mark Maddox 
committed to coming this year. Last year, he unfortunately got caught up in the CTE NFL lawsuits and had to go get an, uh, it's crazy, dude. He came out and talked about it, but they, they can scan him and request him to go get scanned at any time. And they requested him to do it right before he was supposed to fly up here and he wow. had to go or else his shit would have been messed up. For yeah. He even had tickets lined up to come out. Like mm -hmm. the, we start at three to nine. He had tickets to come out. He would have been here at seven o'clock at night. And he's like, I don't know if that's going to be worth it. Yeah. And we're like, no, right. don't, don't yeah. bother. Just, you know, do what you have to do and don't rush. Wow. Yeah. So he's what a guy. Down. Yeah, man. He's great, dude. What a guy. Yeah. We had him on a show a couple weeks ago. It was, uh, that was the record breaking show. We had 2,800 people live right here on the Dang. K gun. And uh, Mr. Mark Maddox gave away a jersey to actually Dr. Bruce won that mm -hmm. raffle, that little wing dinger. So, uh, I mean, since we're talking about that, I suppose we should uh, probably give away something. Become oh, yeah. You so, got a wheel up there, guys. I got the Anyone wheel. that left a comment last week, can I go ahead and tell them what it's all about? Uh, no, I was talking. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, beer bet, Scott. You hope Swank a beer. Yes. There you go. Yes. Well, well, anyways, uh, Swank came up with amazing. Uh, our Finger Lakes Mafia um, has been building. We're trying to get recognition to the Finger Lakes fans over out this way, along with the Bills Mafia and bringing it all together. And tie-dye is a big thing in upstate in, in the Finger Lakes area. So Swank came up with a sweet little tie-dye idea. What this Phantom Morning Wheel Destiny is, uh, the winner is going to win, is a choice from our store at 247buffphantomonium.com of anything of the tie-dye. So you win, check out our store, message us which one you want, what size, and your address. We'll buy it for you, ship it out to you, and it's all yours. Hell if you don't yeah. if you don't win, feel free to go visit the store. Yeah, go check out the store. I think if you write K-Gun Report, you get 5% off, save you some shipping or tax or something like that. Um, you guys ready to do this? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Here you go. If you left a comment last week, your name's on the wheel. <laughs> and we're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning. Oh shoot! Man, it was the last two weeks. It's been right on the edge. And my boy Franklin won. Yay, Franklin! Congratulations, brother. You won yourself an FLX Mafia tie dye shirt. And uh, you know you're in the comment right now, bro. So send uh, just private message me your address, or we'll hook up. Because Emma was uh, his girlfriend was actually at a show here this last weekend. We see each other enough. So we'll get you all straight in the way, bro. Awesome. Congratulations. Sweet. Congratulations for sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, he says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Woohoo! Big up. Uh, yeah, you guys can go over to the 247 buffandemonium.com backslash shop and uh, check those out if you're interested in them. Um, you know, I, I haven't said this yet, but we are part of the Buff Fan Base Network. So please go check out every show that they have on there. I think there's this one with this guy, um, something about sports takes and podcasting and whatever. Uh, RT, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your show, which is also on the network. Wednesdays at eight in the East. What is it? Seven in the West or six in the West? Something like that. I don't yeah. know, but it's eight in the East. So figure it out. If you're on the West coast, whatever the time difference is there did have a lot of people uh, commenting from other parts of the country which i thought was pretty cool Sweet. on the last episode this past wednesday um of course yours truly ryan thomas at ryan thomas take on x formerly known as twitter thanks to elon um of course i've had some really awesome talking points i mentioned quite a few things that i've noticed in differences of last off season and years prior with bean and mcdermott that i think some bills fans would really like to hear so um check that out that's on the fan base stuff um that's on my, all my social media you know stuff and this wednesday um, i'm looking to get a guest on tomorrow night that i'm really excited about it's a guy that i haven't chatted with bills football wise in quite some time so it'll be very interesting to see uh, hopefully he comes through for me says all systems go so far but we know in the scheduling world of podcasting things can get kind of dicey so we'll see but either way a great show will be in store for tomorrow night buffalo fan base thomas take sports podcast Check it out. Hell yeah. Chris Christian has a great question. He says, how many different shows do they have on there, Swank, over on the Buff Fan Base Network? And uh, let's see. I don't know if it's between the four of us if we can name them all or not. I, think I know so. right now, uh, Believe in Bills, mm -hmm. it's Mookie, 
Injustice. Yep. Um, the Nickel City Crew. Yep. With mm-hmm. Rob Crippen. We've got our show, KM Report. And We've Sunday got, Sessions. Um, That's a double up. Podcast. Mm-hmm. Yep. But we I got, think right now those are the only four going. Tea Time with Robin. At this point. Yeah. Tea Time with Robin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, let's talk 716. I know Robbie and Robin potentially mm-hmm. are going to have a show coming up here very shortly. Yep. Yeah, I think that's pretty close to it. If we miss somebody, I apologize. But I think that's about it. Also, there's the audio platform version of all those two that are out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, go follow on all the socials. They've been be- very beautiful to us. It's been a very great thing. Literally, awesome time. Literally, every time Ryan Thomas is on, uh, we talk about it before we go live about what a great choice it's been. And uh, mm-hmm. we're stoked to be a part of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. So I just went to YouTube Buffalo fan base and they have, you know, the Egg King Kilgore show is on there. Oh, yep. Um, like you said, Nickel City. The Shout Wyoming out Buffalo. to Ed. There you go. Hey, man. Overdue Bills podcast. That'll start showing up again. Yeah, there's a lot of them. We got Dean coming on shortly here, too, don't we? Well, he's coming on the week before the draft. And Dean is the 24 or er, Dean Kindig, right? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's a. Uh, he puts in a lot of work towards his a breakdown of the, of the draft players, and it's not just the first. This five dude rounds. has a, he's got Microsoft Excel as his as his most common app. <laughs> I, I know it. I know it for a fact. I respect it. Anyone that's got the spreadsheets with, yeah, with all the measurables and stuff, he's he's legit. <laughs> Every time we talk about him, all I picture is that meme of Zach Galifianakis from The Hangover when he's doing when he's counting <laughs> cards and all the numbers are floating around. All the numbers are floating. <laughs> Yeah, if it, when he breaks down that Excel, that's pretty sweet. You can look at it and see how many mm-hmm. visits, how many recalls, and it's it's a wonderful app to see. And it really shows you – it's a good spreadsheet to see. It really shows you um, who the bills are interested in. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what I like about it is a lot of people have their mock drafts and they have their top 50 list, and it's based off all 32 NFL teams. He breaks things down based off of uh, Buffalo Bills needs and all that stuff. You're not mm-hmm. going to see – a three fits, four, yeah. You're not right? going to see a three four outside linebacker on his top linebacker list. It's going to be a four three guy or a four three three guy that fits the mold of Buffalo, and he and he does a great job at, at figuring all that stuff out. Yeah, he blew my mind last year when he was on. Um, it was just it was very easy to follow. He's very analytical, and uh, it, it, I don't know. It's just out of all those guys, they can get very like, oh my god, I don't know what's going on. Like as far as for me. You know, like I'm like, what the hell is going on? But he was a, uh, I don't know, he's just easy to follow. So definitely check him out and follow him. Um, Chris Christian says this one's easy because it sends me a reminder on Tuesdays. LOL. Yeah, bro, we try to set it up. That's what that subscription yeah, gets you, right? You get subscribed to our channels, yep. and it'll it'll let you know all about it. I'll give you a hack if you subscribe to our channel, RT's channel, and the fan base's channel, you'll never miss a show at all. Ever. Ever. Yeah. So no, I had well, a guy. You might as well subscribe to the Endless Mountain Derelicts channel too. While you're yeah, why not, man? <laughs> if, you like, if you like some outlaw country, open it up for Dylan Wheeler, national touring artist from Tennessee on Friday. <laughs> I had a guy that messaged right. me the other day. He was probably, I, I, I know he's followed my stuff for the last few years, but he thanked me for putting stuff on audio because he has a two hour drive to work and he listens to the podcast while he drives. Yeah. It's like, that's pretty cool. You can just listen to one 45 minute, another 45 minute and your drive's over, you know, mm-hmm. absolutely. Save yeah. one for the drive there. Save one for the drive home. And uh, in the spring and summer, like I'm on a lawnmower a lot for work yeah. and I just pop them in. I catch up on everybody, do it, do it like that. And it's great. Sometimes, Here's a trick too. If you like listening to the audio, man, um, we're we're still working on the crossover for this show to go to the audio platforms. But I'll just pop on either the YouTube feed or the Facebook feed and just listen to it. You know, like mm-hmm. you can do that too. So it's a good time. Lots of options. Great, great, great day to be alive. Really great day. 100%. <laughs> Guys, um, we didn't get a chance to do this last week, and I felt really bad, um, but. You guys know, man, especially like you guys that have been here for a while. When we have X players on or we have um, that kind of guest that we don't get to talk to very often, sometimes the show just takes on uh, a life of its own. So we, we kind of go off script a little bit and, and let it be because uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you got last week, Ryan, but Brad, <laughs> I did. Yeah. So Brad Lamb talking about 
uh, coaching up his son and doing all that mm-hmm. stuff and giving insight on that. That was just so fascinating. So crazy. really cool. It was really, really cool. Like inside, my respect for him just went up even more, you yeah. know, hearing stuff like that. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. It's like kind of yeah. that inside baseball stuff that we're lucky enough for whatever reason, people feel comfortable and they just, they let it go, you know? Um, and, and I never want to stop that, that kind of flow of cool stuff that you're not going to hear anywhere else. Um, so we didn't get to this. I want to sincerely apologize to anybody that was following along online, but mostly to my buddy, Jerry who worked very hard on his segment. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's trivia night, isn't it? Trivia night. It is trivia night. We can do a little trivia. Why why don't you tell them all about what's going on here, Jerry? So in past years during off season, we have to try to keep the schedule busy so we can produce something for the Fandemonium Bills Mafia to keep interested every day of the week. And and the trivia on Mondays has been something we've been doing for the last two or three years. So I just started it last week. Um, The answer of that one was Marshawn Lynch. And this week's Monday trivia, Monday night it goes out, let you guys answer. And then we come back and tell you what the answers are. And I'm going to read them to you guys and see if you guys can throw them out, uh, out of the top of your heads. Okay, ready? Ready. I have to read them because I have them right here. All right. This player, the Bills selected me in the fifth round, 134th overall of the 2006 NFL draft. I ranked fifth in Bills history in both tackles and sacks when I retired after playing in my sixth Pro Bowl of my career. I know it. Okay, so is it Chris Kelsey, <laughs> Paul Posnusny, Kyle Williams, or Aaron Schobel? All four are great Buffalo Bills players. Big 95, Kyle Williams. There you go. Kyle Williams is the answer. So <laughs> if you guys you answered and you, and you were interested and you're watching tonight what the answer was, the answer is Mr. Kyle Williams. Straight out of LSU. <clears throat> there you go. That same year, Dante Whitner and John McCargo were taken in the first round. Ashton Yabuti, I love that name, was taken in Yabuti. the third, Ohio State. Cole Simpson, a good back that Yabuti. I thought had a lot of potential. Kyle Williams, Brad Butler, Keith Ellison, Terrence Pennington, and Aaron Merce. Brad but, yeah. Butler, that was he was like an all-pro guard that retired very young. Yeah. From what I remember. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, oh, yeah. He, was, he was a pro bowler, and then he, he just said, you know what, I'm going to get into helping my community and right off into the sunset. He was in his 20s when he retired. <laughs> Yep. So Kyle Williams has a special place in all of Bills Mafia's hearts. He, he was here during the drought um, near the end of his career. He never made the playoffs until the Miami Dolphins game when he scored that touchdown. And later on that night, they found out that they're going to the playoffs when Cincinnati Bengals won that game. And we're all going to have that deeply ingrained in our brain of him hugging his children or his son, you know, after they did that. And uh, I love doing the, the trivia about, players that, that not necessarily are going to be going to the Hall of Fame that everyone's going to all around the league is going to remember but Buffalo Bills Mafia will always remember because of what they meant to the team when they're here and Kyle Williams is one of those guys that we're always going to remember possible Hall of Famer his stats were crazy he was a he was a staple of this defense that has always been good staple of this defense for the Buffalo Bills during those drought years and then he made the playoffs and it was so amazing I mean, do you? Here, here's a question for you guys: Is there any doubt in any of your minds that he's like not going to make the wall? Oh, he's making the wall for sure, hundred percent. Yeah, right? like definite, yeah. definite. He's got it. I could see like they're they're only going to wait like that little bit of time before they actually. <laughs> like, I think I think he's he's wall of famer. I think Eric Molds should be on the wall of fame. Of course, yeah. um, there's. There's quite a few guys yeah. that, that should be a part of that for sure. We've had this conversation on the show a couple of times, but um, man, there's, yeah, there's a handful of those dudes. There's, there's heroes, like you're saying, like a Kyle Williams, there was like the mayor of Buffalo every year during those drought years, you know, mm-hmm. that, that really like gave you something to root for, gave you like, had that attitude, you know, like, I don't know, Fred Jack. Shobel's Sh- another one. He was Shobel. mentioned. Yeah. He's, he's right up there too. Yep. yep. He was great. But yeah, good stuff, man. Interesting. Awesome job. Uh, Tune in next Monday evening. I'll have another one for you guys. Hell yeah. That means follow us on all of our social medias to figure out what the trivia question is. And trivia. Then tune into the show so you can find out the answer. The one last (laughs) week was tricky. He mentioned being drafted. And then he said, my first touchdown pass was to Robert Royale. So the first thing you think is quarterback. Mm -hmm. But the answer was Marsh. 
answer was Marshawn Lynch. I thought that was a good little trickster move yep. by Jared with the first one. I'll throw I, every, I, one of those in there. I was I was at that game. That's why I remember, oh, really? <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I was at that game with my cousin Doug. Yeah. Jared, awesome. you slippery little devil, you. <laughs> Beast mode, Marshawn um, Lynch. Franklin wanted to know to kick back just a quick second. Brad Lamb's son, he played North Carolina. He's playing in North Carolina, right? Charlotte. I believe it's Charlotte. Charlotte. University okay. or something Charlotte. like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's out that way. Yeah. Xander, I think is his name. Xander. Xander Lamb. Yep. Xander Lamb. Yep. Yep. And uh, Brad says he's doing a pretty good job earning yep. his stripes. He's doing well on special teams, and uh, he believes he'll be top five, top six of the roster making the team. So, yeah. Best of luck to him. He said that was, he didn't know if that was dad ranking, but that, right. yeah, top five for sure. Um, let's see. We got the best RT dude. I don't know. I don't know if you get this guy popping up a little bit. Uh, Scott knows him. Nate Nacho, dude. That is this guy's handle. It's the, my favorite handle <laughs> that I've ever come across in five seasons. Of Nate the Nacho King. Libre. Nate Nacho, bro. Nacho. It's such a great, great handle. Uh, he says, what up, fellas? Super focused on the draft. What would you do? Number one wide receiver at 28 slash D-line at 60 scenario. Ooh, number two D-line at 28 wide receiver at 60 scenario. He's got a lot of these. Do you guys want to run through these? Sure. 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 Yeah. Why not? All right. Yeah. All, right, all, right, all, right all right. Let it rip. I'm just going to, so I'm, I'm going to like be the um, master ceremonies and just read these off because I have no idea what I would do. Uh, as far as like specific players, as far as position, I'll weigh in on that. Jerry, I don't know where you're at with this, but that's what I'm going to do is just position. So scenario number one, and please play along in the comments and don't forget, like, follow, subscribe, share, do all that crap. Um, number one, wide receiver at 28, D-line at 60. Scooter. Either one works for me. I'm going to keep it simple. There's a lot of wide receivers in this draft, a lot. And I think there are, there's a handful, I think have number one round caliber, and there's a lot that have number two round caliber. So if one of those top six wide receivers is still available at number one, yes, get them. I think the defensive line, I like Devondre Sweat, but he's someone that's a D tech, a tech one defensive tackle that is surprisingly falling in the second and third round. But with the recent pickups that the Bills have done in free agency, it almost looks like the Tech 1 spot is taken care of. We don't have Ed Oliver's backup yet. So if any of those top two or three Tech 3 defensive tackles are available, and I'll throw some names out here for you, um, it would be a like a, a Jerzon Newton or Byron Murphy. Any of those two, if they drop, right now they're ranked 8th and 13th overall. If any of those guys drop to Buffalo, I would not be surprised at all if uh, – Bean were to bump up and get at Oliver, rotational guy. So I like both those scenarios, but right now it's tough. I honestly seem trading back, but that's a different story. We'll get to that question later. Yeah, that was the first scenario was wide receiver at 28, D-line at 60. Scenario number two is D-line at 28, wide receiver at 60. Scenario number three, trade up in the first, which is where you're going. Scenario number four, trade back to 36, up to 44, hypothetical, but some point value. That's 2860. RT, where are you standing on all this, man? I stand somewhere in between A and B, between them either staying at 28 and taking a wide receiver. Um, I'm not sold on them taking a defensive lineman in the second round as much as I would have been, you know, two, three weeks ago. Um, I think that there is a little bit of a discrepancy in the guys that are rated first round D line talent to the second. There are some guys that are, you know, in that in that crop of of picks in the second round where they might have to move up in the second round to get one of them. I wouldn't be shocked if they went wide receiver in the first round, offensive lineman in the second round, um, as they went tight end in the first round last year, offensive lineman in the second round with Osiris Torrance. The only reason why I say that. Um, is just because I think that there's a lot of really good offensive linemen in their range of where they're picking in the second round to where they wouldn't really have to trade up. So they'd still be able to hold on to their picks in the fourth rounds and, and uh, you know, 
kind of just stay where, with where they're at. Uh, if they make a big move and trade up for a wide receiver in the first round, then obviously those picks in those middle rounds wouldn't wouldn't be there. Those would be part of the part of the picks in in a package that would go towards them getting a, a trade up uh, wide receiver. But this wide receiver class is one of the deepest I've seen in a really long time. Um, and the last time it, there was a, a receiver class this deep, the Bills traded up and got one. And that was actually the last time they drafted a receiver in the first round in Sammy Watkins. That was Sammy 10 Watkins. years ago, guys. It was 10 uh, years ago. So uh, for me, I mean, I, I know there's a lot of people that don't want to fall into the you know pigeonhole of drafting a receiver in the first round, but I think it's long overdue. And I think it's the perfect draft class to actually – go about that plan and and to add a player at that position so that's my take no and there's wide receivers in the first round the last five years have basically been you can't miss right right so there have been a lot of first round wide receivers drafted and most of them are successful except for quentin johnson who was injured for the chargers this past year but yeah you you can't miss right now in the first round of wide receivers who i also picked in my fantasy uh league my Horrible, the guy who got hurt. Horrible, horrible fantasy. Don't game. don't write those guys. You know, I, and it's even you know he wasn't good his rookie year, but even his talent level is like can't write him off in year two. Like he's got mm-hmm. the talent, it just wasn't mm-hmm. really a good rookie year, especially in comparison to some of these other guys. But to me, I, I think the the Sammy Watkins 2014 class, in comparison to where they were at then compared to now, Brandon Bean's not going to overextend himself to get a wide receiver he's gonna he's gonna try to find the two or three that he really likes that are in range of where they're picking if they have to move up you know eight to nine picks to get that guy then he'll do that um make no bones about it he's done it you know he's traded up quite a lot quite a lot more than than what people realize um but yeah i think that there's a lot of talent with with where they're picking and and uh at that position in particular that would add another another weapon to what they already have I like it. I like it. Jerry, what's your take, man? What do you want so, to do? Like what Ryan said, I would imagine that Brandon Bean is going to try to trade up a little bit to get the receiver he wants. If that's out of the scope of things, I could see them trading back. But what I'm hoping to see is trade up, get a wide receiver. And then I don't, in the 60th pick, they might trade up and get either Newbin. I think they're going to get Newbin to get safety or uh, Cooper Beebe. Uh, the center. Um, I refer to him because last week when Brad Lamb was on, he really was on the fact that he thinks that the Buffalo Bills should get not – who's the other center they have right now? Clap. Yeah, Clap. Guard Clap. Center. You got yeah. Brad Lamb. McGovern switching over to – Yeah. Brad yep. said he, they should focus on a guy who's specifically in that center position. And Cooper Beebe, I think, is one of those guys who can fill in and do that. So if I was to be a guessing man to see what's going on with what, what I would hope for this draft is being trades up to get a receiver and they get to either Newbin safety or BB uh, center in the second round. I like it. And I, I think wide receiver is a hot take. Yeah. needs to happen. I, well, yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's the flavor of the week. Right. And, and it's also one of those things, I, I guess like when's the last time that the bills had uh, an inclination like everybody knew what they were going to do in the first round or everybody had like a very strong inclination of what they were going to do in the first round you know like the first pick like to me the one i think of is josh allen that's the only one (laughs) that's the only one that's it it. really is they're going to last six or seven years they need to go get a quarterback and that's what they did so for me i think right now it feels like that it feels like bean's been making all these like really safe simmering uh draft picks and free agency moves and you know you got stefan diggs for josh allen and you did all that these big splashes um you know you, you go out and you get a von miller but obviously that that hasn't turned out exactly the way you want it right um i don't know man i see i see him doing it i see him i see him putting it all in and, and trying to make a big swing and and hit on a really good wide receiver in this first mm-hmm. round. So I think for me, man, for Nate's scenario, I'm, I'm going with the trade up. Um, yep. I don't want to see him sell the farm, but if you're looking at how many draft picks we have and look at how Bean is willing to give up the next year's draft picks, if he knows a guy is the guy for him, uh, a la Josh Allen, 
you know, um, or a la Stefan Diggs or whatever it is. If there's a sure thing in his brain, I think he has no problem throwing throwing his junk on the table and, and letting you read the tea leaves. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I see. I just feel it. It's I got no basis for this. I'm not in his pocket or his ear or anything, but I just think it's almost time. It's like Mount St. Helens, dude. I think it's about to blow. It's about to blow. And two, you got to look at the draft. The draft is an opportunity to make your team better for the present and the future. Yeah. That's, that's what separates the, the contenders to the champions and the, and the, you know, pretenders to contenders, you know, that, that's what, that's what makes that difference. And we're contenders. There's just a little bit of a space that they have to fulfill to get to be champions. And that, I mean, we'll kind of, we'll talk about this of course, but I, I've seen a lot of, you know, Twitter polls and, and uh, you know, I think Scott put one out there too, you know, does the Curtis Samuel signing change, whether they should go out and draft a wide receiver. I think it actually adds to the fact that they should draft a wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that Curtis Samuel is not a great addition. I think it just goes to show you that Brandon Bean recognizes, Hey, the more weapons that Josh Allen has, the merrier that this is going to be <laughs> come Christmas time uh, mm -hmm. in Buffalo. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, that that's a good, good way to look at it. Yeah. We have a receiver number two that we need right now. Curtis Samuel comes in. Now it's like, okay, we got that now. WR number two is definitely what we need because if we get that now, it's just going to complete the whole party. And so Khalil Chris, Shakir's like said, the yeah. best wide receiver four in the NFL. If that, yeah. if that no, I, yeah, I totally get it. Now that there's pressure to get that number two wide receiver because we have Curtis Samuel and Shakir, because mm -hmm. that number two receiver will solidify probably the best wide receiver uh, you know four in the in the whole NFL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the tight ends. I mean. Mm -hmm. Who's to say that those guys can't do it? <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I think you got to think longevity wise too, right? Um, you, mm -hmm. you know, we're already in a, a bit of cap trouble. What what they need to do is start investing in these wide receivers on rookie contracts and get some of these guys, get get the Shakirs. You know, you got Shakir, you got Kincaid, you got Diggs with a big contract, you got Samuel with probably the best contract of his career so far. In the higher level, you got Josh, you're paying him off. He's obviously going to, take deals and do what's best for the team and blah, blah, blah. But like you got to start getting some of these young guys in here on, on cheap contracts and, and sort like starting to sort them out because mm -hmm. the uh, longevity of things needs to, needs to be solidified. So I, I can see it. Sure. It's definitely the first two rounds for me. Absolutely. There's a wide receiver off the board. Um, Chris Christian asks, how many wide receivers do we think will be gone at 28th realistically? So if we stayed where we are, how many wide receivers do you think are gone in the first round before us? I'll go opposite. Jerry, <laughs> where you go? Um, the first round of good ones will be gone. That's for sure. They were talking about that in WGR 550 this morning. Um, there's going to be two runs for wide receiver, and there's your top three or top four that are, you know, the, that are out there scouted, and those will be gone. And if they're gone, they're saying that Buffalo should back up and trade back because another wave of receivers will come in the second round. So um, I'm thinking that's why I want Brandon Bede. I think he's going to move up. I think he's going to jump more in three or four spots, what he's used to be used to doing. We used to see him doing, and I think he's actually going to go get one of those top four wide receivers. So if they stay at 28, I think that first tier of wide receiver talent's gone. If they trade up, which I think Bean will do, we'll be fine. Great. Great. Hey guys, if you're new to the show, I want you to realize that you just experienced a classic Jerry moment where I asked him a very <laughs> specific question about a number and he danced around it without giving us one. So Jerry, four receiver, the top four receivers will be gone. Oh, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. RT, what do you think, buddy? I honestly, I think potentially five could be gone. Um, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., um, Got to throw the junior in there because it matters. Yeah, Marvin absolutely. Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze. Um, those three specifically are shoe in top, arguably 10 picks. Mm -hmm. um, those are locks to be picked at least at the very least in the top 12. And then beyond that, if there's a team and there's always a team that falls in love with a scouting combine of, of epic proportions, which to me, I, I really don't think it's, I think it's proven that it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. Um, some team could fall in love with Xavier worthy. He could go in the top 15, top 20. 
Then the guy that played alongside him, Adonai Mitchell, he could go, you know, 20 to 25. Brian Thomas Jr. could go 25 to 28. I'm not saying that that's, you know, how I'd rank them, but just in terms of how teams think and, you know, what can change between now and, you know, April, what, 25th, um, a lot can change in terms, in terms of how these teams evaluate these players. And for all we know, you know, for the last, 11 months they've had Marvin Harrison going in the top five. Malik Neighbors might go in the top five with the combine that he just turned in. So um, I think four or five could easily be gone by the time Buffalo picks if they were to stay at 28. What do you think, Scoop? I'm with RT. RT. I, I'm saying five to seven. I've seen mocks where there's up to seven teams reaching later in the rounds for the Keon Coleman's of the world. And even the Troy Frank Franklins, if, the, if those two fall in, then that'll be seven people in the first round. And a, it's a very fun game to watch because as Nate Nacho brought up in one of the scenarios, and like Jared said, if Harrison Neighbors and Adunze are gone, just like we saw last year with the receivers starting to go, and you may see a little bit of a panic and let's bump up to get the guy we actually want where Bill's yeah. got Kincaid. Kincaid arguably was the best five receivers in the draft last in the first round last year. So to see a Brian Thomas still there and a Donnie Mitchell, I you jump all over that. But if these receivers go quick, the top 15, if those top three are gone in the top 15, and like Jared said, if that second wave of wide receivers starting to go, start happening around 20 again, you may see the bump up because of a little bit of a panic. These 40 times are for real. Um, I'm, with, I'm with RT. I watch the film. I watch how these guys create separation rather than mm -hmm. just using their speed. But some teams like the Raiders and all those, some, there's a few more teams out there that just see that four, three Jets. mark and they can't get their head off of it. <laughs> right. So you kind of, you kind of hope that that happens yeah. that these teams start jumping out. Cause then more positions open up for you later on in the draft. But um, yeah, five to seven, I see going in the first round. If the top five are still available for Buffalo, you grab one of those guys. I like the Brian Thomas jr. Pickup. I, uh, yep. I agree, man. I think, we got, let's see, Nate Nacho asking, does that mean Brian Thomas Jr. for trade up in the first for you, Swank? Appreciate you guys fleshing out my question. Keep up the good work. Go Bills. Thanks so much for the question, dude. And it was a good one, a deep one. And we like to sink our teeth into it. Uh, yeah, abs absolutely, man. Like, that's my guy. I think if they're going to do it and take a swing, take a swing and get it all, man. And uh, he's the dude to do it for for me. I mean. Harrison Jr. That's cool. That's got there's some pedigree, whatever you know what I'm saying. But I think a Brian Thomas Jr. is where I'm going. Um, yeah, but he's projected to go 27th. So, like, if if Bills are sitting there 28, they'll definitely. If he's the only one left, if Beans thinking what you're thinking, Swank, you're jumping up to get him wherever he's at. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see here. I've skipped out on some uh, comments here because we had some good conversation going on. Um, we got Paulette Brown. In the hey, comments, Paulette. the amazing Paula hmm. Brown. How's it going? Uh, let's see. Alan Lartz was wondering where Jerry Rice's son is going to go in the draft. Any guesses? Fourth, I'm fifth round. I'm going to say fourth or fifth round. Don't be shocked. The 49ers take a flyer <laughs> on it. Don't, don't be shocked. <laughs> Just, that'll be like yeah, the like... easiest, cheesiest storyline oh, yeah. to predict. But he won't be wearing number 80. That, that I do. Mm -hmm. That I do know. Mm-hmm. That's confirmed for sure. I start. I started reading the book, uh, uh, Michael Jordan book today with Sullivan and Everett. And um, one of the big things that Michael Jordan was credited for is he wasn't the best talent growing up in high school and stuff like that, but his work ethic was beyond the best in the league. And that's what Jerry Rice is. Jerry Rice's first year in the NFL, he dropped a lot of passes. He struggled, but his worth ethic, work ethic, was beyond anybody else's. And that's where what led him to his Hall of Fame career and his success. So if his son is anything like him, it'd be foolish if you passed up on him if you had the opportunity later in the rounds to pick him up. Because if he's anything like his dad, he'll prove you wrong. I like so it. tough. So tough. Because <laughs> he's played very well, but that's that's really tough shoes to fill. You're talking about the GOAT. Arguably, yeah, he won't. He won't be like his dad. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's of all positions. You know, not even quarterbacks, but just in yeah. general, goat upon goats. Listen, if you talk about pedigree, you talk about pedigree. If, if yeah. you're going to take right. a pedigree from somebody, Why you want to take the work Why ethic not? is going to be take you a lot further than yeah. other stuff. So, if he was raised right, which I'm sure he was, and listened to his dad, then yep. he should be okay. <laughs> he should be fine. <laughs> I'm going to be my own receiver, Dad. All right, <laughs> I want to be my own NFL legend, Dad. <laughs> I learned <it> from you. <laughs> 
he's running the hills with his dad, then he's got a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Kevin Kenya. What is up, brother? Howdy, boys. Go Bills. How you doing, brother? He's playing Euchre tonight, so thanks for joining us. How do you know that? We had a chat. He joined a new company, uh, life insurance company, uh, um, yeah. that he gave me a call. So hit him up if you're um, interested in a new life insurance policy. But uh, we talked a little bit, and he likes to make tries to make the shows, but Tuesday nights are his Euchre nights. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, uh, let's see. You should get a logo hey, of his man. business. Bloop. <laughs> hey man, I mean, we can talk sponsorship. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, we'll Kevin. See. Jerry, just get at Jerry at Jared247 Buff Anemonium on Twitter. Uh, let's see here, boys. We got the draft coming up. What else do we have coming up um associated with the draft? Oh, four hour marathon. K-Gun Report <laughs> Draft Special Show. We will have phone calls from all of you. Uh, we'll have all the picks. Um, Scott and Jerry and I will be here at Casa de Swank Live. Um, we'll have guests popping in. We're going to be doing some giveaways, all sorts of crazy stuff. So, uh, Scooter, what do you think? What's the date on that? That is April 25th. Uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. I think the, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what time the draft starts, but we'll be on about a half an hour before it does. And like Swank says, we'll be covering all 32 picks, the trade ups, the trade backs, the shocking picks. Um, yeah, you guys will be, uh, we'll get more details out there about the phone calls and all that stuff. But, and y'all can't call in, pick 28, just so you know. It's yeah. just going <laughs> to space it out. But, Nope, it's going to be a good That's time. That's when you put the phones on Do Not Disturb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. We're looking to do like little five, three to five minute segments. You call <laughs> in, you get your three yeah. to five minutes, and you can hang out with us and get your two cents in there. So we want as many people as we can calling in, but we need some sort of you know, <laughs> structure. But it's structure a good time. We always we always have a couple drinks. A couple, I mean, uh, we have a good share. We eat pizza and wings. We ha enjoy the full draft. You guys were watching as you watch. Uh, we're trying to guess these picks coming in. We might even make a little bit of a game out of it. But, uh, yeah, Buff Fan Base Justice is actually going to offer up something for a nice little giveaway, um, which is going to be sweet for this show, for the draft show. So, again, oh, yeah. same sweet. concept. You leave a comment, you'll be entered for a chance to win. Yeah. We'll be giving away a couple T-shirts and stuff like that, too. So, if you're interested, come hang out. It'll be like a celebrity who's who of Buff Fan Base <laughs> uh, podcasters. What was I going to see? I saw Ooh, something here. Oh, Paulette, why is the prices of the tickets going up because of the new stadium? <laughs> Anybody got an economics uh, class for Paulette here? I, I guess I could just throw out a short, short take on this. Basically, done. Any, any, <laughs> team, any team, yeah, basically done so basically any team that opens up a new stadium in the nfl you have personal seat licenses psls they're very expensive so with the massive amount of season ticket holders that the stadium behind me has what is it out of like seventy three thousand, like fifty seven thousand, or season ticket holders mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. something like that i don't have the exact numbers in front of me but you know, the season ticket holders right now, they're getting letters in the mail. Any Anyone that I know um, is basically saying, okay, so if you want to renew these in 2026, which is the first year that the new stadium really opens, you'll have to purchase a PSL. So those are a lot of money. That's essentially guaranteeing that you're going to get your seat. And then there's the cost of the games as well. And, of course, that's going to go up because the stadium is going to be state-of-the-art especially in comparison to anything that we've ever had before um, getting with the times and things like that. So I'm not a fan of it. Um, you guys know my sentiments. I, I, I wish we would have gotten a dome. I know I'm, I'm kind of in the minority here with that. I know that, uh, you know, I like the cold games too, but I wish we would have gotten a dome just for the economics of the area to be able to host mm -hmm. more events, different events, potentially a Super Bowl. That would have been really cool. But um, as well, what, what 
bothers me more about it is knowing that some season ticket holders won't be able to renew their season tickets um, because the price is going up so much in comparison mm-hmm. to what we've been accustomed to these last 20, 25 years, especially as the NFL's grown, the bill season tickets have remained at the bottom as far as cost per ticket. So it's only a matter of time that this was going to come up. It's almost like, uh, you know, death taxes and Buffalo Bills getting a new stadium, <laughs> forcing fans to pay more money. It's just the way it is. So, right, right. Yeah. I have one question though for you: the PSL sure. that you're talking about, the, the private license or whatever it's called, is that one time purchase for 20 years? Because I heard it was like a 20 year guarantee. For it is. Tickets. So it's yeah, a one time tr- purchase. Sure. Yes. And it then is. you pay for your season tickets and from there on out. So, the, so right. the first year is going to be expensive, but then afterwards it'll be. Well, yeah, it's, it's one lump sum. Like I have a guy, I have a guy that, you know, I know really well, he's a lawyer in this area and they sent him a letter in the mail. It was almost $250,000 for him to renew his, his season ticket, $250,000, six figures. Wow. So yeah. And they're how much he was paying before. I mean, you know, in terms of kind of being great and that's the thing you're grandfathered in, there wasn't really necessarily like a true PSL. Mm-hmm. So I, I know it was a lot less than that. Right. <laughs> I know but that, that was... but that's for 20 years, right? Right. But then okay. he's got to pay, you know, kind of, it's not like one price it's that. And then there's season other tickets. then there's season tickets. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, you keep them in your family, obviously we know, we know, you know, I know you guys yeah. have met a bunch of people that are season ticket holders and it's like a birthright that's yeah. handed down yeah. from generation to generation. So some of those, you know, passing of the torch moments that, you know, some families thought they'd have, they might not. And that's, mm. that's sad, you know, that that's frustrating, but I, I hope that they work to, to work it out. I, I, I think that, you know, enough uproar, enough people speak out, they can change it. So make it a little bit more, you know, economically available to people. Mm. We got mm-hmm. some of the uh, the twenty four seven BF fam weighing in here. Kevin says you can spread out the PSL fee, so that would be nice. Um, I guess mm-hmm. if you go into the uh, the season knowing that you can spread it out over thirty years. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Jay says thirty years. It's good for. I talked to my four. rep. I won't be. I won't get into the center to pick my seats until next year. The sweet season ticket holders are in now. There's a list. Yeah, yeah, there's a list that they're, you know, and that's what he's, they let him know, you know, hey, you're going to be on kind of a waiting list and the suites are getting picked out. The suites are going to be like state of the art. I mean, mm-hmm. the suites are going to be really, really nice. But would you say the suites are going to be sweet? Sweet. Yeah. That would <laughs> the be sweetest good word. suites are brown. <laughs> sweetest sweet. But I mean, in terms of like, well, you get who a couple we, thousand who, people paying two hundred fifty thousand dollars of course they're going to be good. Yeah. Right, right. But, th- but who we are, that's not, it's yeah. not really who we are. You yeah. know what I mean? It's, we're not, we're not Dallas. We're not, mm-hmm. you know, we're Las not Vegas. LA. We're Buffalo. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. there's, we don't care about that. Yeah. I, I, I can speak for a lot of fans because then people say, I don't care about my suite or anything like that. I, I just want my seat, you know? Yeah. So we'll see. I hope it all works out. Yeah. I really do. Paul Rossi I wonder says, why, I wonder what happens if you spend that money and you pay it off and all of a sudden you're no longer a season ticket holder. Does the next person that takes over ha- also have to put down a PC, PLS PCL? Yes, so thirty years from now, it, it would it, you like if if they pay it and then thirty years from now they decide not to. Do no, it I'm just or... saying they pay it and then twenty years from now they decide they don't want they don't want to buy the tickets anymore. Does the next person that take over those tickets now have to drop a two hundred fifty dollar fee? Maybe I I uh, at the, or transfer at it the, at the tra- yeah transfer it to another person at that I think they're they're obviously when when something's new they're going to charge more. So 20 mm, years yeah. from now, if they're charging the same price they did when the place first opened, then we really got a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would, that would be wrong. You know what I mean? Um, I know season tickets have gone up a little bit for the Sabres and that's even crazy because you guys know, you know, the Sabres haven't, they haven't won in mm-hmm. 12, 13 years. So how are they going up when the team, the product has not been up yeah. to par, you know, right. it's, yeah, it's yeah. hard to rationalize. Franklin says if you don't buy tickets one of the 30 years you lose your tickets so it doesn't matter right if you pay it or not but then the next person has to pay yes get them yeah Yeah. license yeah yeah Yeah. and unfortunately guys another thing Paulette is our Buffalo Bills are winning so that's a huge that's a huge Mm -hmm. um, uh, ingredient to this recipe of why the prices are where they're at is because 
there's a winning product being put in the field and it's a good product and they know they have a good quarterback for the next 30 years. <laughs> and anyway, but yeah, when you're in the, when you're in the moment and there's big decisions to make and money's involved when you're winning right now, that's when it counts. So that's, that's probably why the price is a little bit higher. And we're all forgetting that this new stadium is going to blow 99% of, of the fans minds away of what's being out there. And I know Ryan, you yeah. said that's not Buffalo. We're, we'll go out there and we'll sit in the snow for a right. game ticket. And I, I totally 100% agree with that and understand mm-hmm. that. But it's an NFL product. And right. this team's it's winning. Today's NFL is different yeah. than it was 30, 45 years ago when they built the stadium behind me. It's yeah. a lot different. <laughs> so, and when they have a winning product out there, they have to. They have to capitalize. They have a dollar. It yeah. is a business at yeah. the end of the day. You know. Paul Rossi says so. it's a joke when the state slash us taxpayers paid $850 million for the stadium last year. I think that's a, a, a relevant point. I mean, I, I think sure. that we can feel slighted about that slightly, but I I want to back everybody up because um, definitely us as Bills fans tend to live in the moment. Like a lot of us tend to like live in the moment and think that the good times are going to last forever. I end almost every single show uh, trying to remind people to, to stay centered and grounded and, and realize where they are. I want everybody to go back for the last five to 10 years and think about where your mindset was on whether you wanted a new stadium or not, because these are the things that come along with getting a new stadium. This yep. Nobody thought about that back in the day. It was our stadium's old and look at that cool stadium over there. It wasn't, but we got to pay like <laughs> ridiculous money for seats. And I mean, I think there's a balance between both of those uh, sure. viewpoints, but like, Really, like, at the end of the day, we want the team here. Yes, right. We want yeah. it here, and we and we want everybody happy. We want Josh Allen to live until he's eight hundred years old, and not to decline until he's seven hundred and ninety nine. All of us, you know, they, we all want the same things. But there are certain things that come along with like building an enormous eight hundred and fifty million dollar <laughs> like taxpayer funded stadium, where yeah, they're gonna they're gonna charge you to be there, and everybody's gonna want to get in, like. I honestly don't expect to see a game for like the first five seasons after that stadium's open. Like, right. It's and sad. To your, but... to your point, Swank. Uh, oh, what were you saying? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no it's sad. It's just, it's just sad. It is. <laughs> it but, is. Go ahead. And, and to your point, you know, like 10 years ago when Ralph Wilson passed, you know, there was real fear as to what was going to happen with the team. Um, Terry Pagula, for all of the fans that throw fault, you know, I, I'm reading a lot of it. I, I know a guy that's a writer for my local paper. He said something to the tune of Terry Pagula owes the fans an explanation. Terry Pagula doesn't owe fans anything. No. He, doesn't, he, he doesn't owe anything. He's a, he's a businessman who invested in two franchises in one city. Um, and this isn't a Terry doesn't owe the fans anything because he saved the team, but Terry bought the teams to save the teams, put people in place to run the teams. Those are the people that we want to hear from. I I don't need to hear about Terry Pagula's draft plans because Terry Pagula is not drafting the team. Brandon Bean is, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I I think that there's a little bit of a misconception with the last 10 years. I mean, I'm happy he bought the teams and kept them here. There's clauses that say that they can't be moved uh, even once he passes away. So. We're talking generation upon generation that'll get the chance to enjoy what we've enjoyed yes. throughout our entire lives. And and that's really important. If I uh, can't put a price on that. No. Mm-hmm. If if the Bills left Buffalo, I and that was a real fear for how many years? Like so a many while. years. Like, yeah. right, like way too long. Um I genuinely had that conversation with myself. Like I don't think I could be I can never be a fan of another team. I never. Right. Like I could be right. a fan of football, but I would not enjoy it anywhere near as much as I do rooting for the Bills. I grew up with the Bills. I want the Bills. I don't know how Rams fans do it. I don't know how the Browns fans, even though I hate the Browns, how Browns fans did it when the whole Baltimore debacle happened. I, I don't know. Ravens and Colts fans. Yeah, yeah, all of that, man. I don't know how they did it because it's like it's got to feel like so unsettling and unnerving that like you love this thing for so long in your city and then it's gone and now you're supposed to just like pick some random team 
Like mm-hmm. I know, I know the practice squad players for the bills. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. I'm not starting <laughs> over, dude. I've invested way too much in this. Like get out of here. <laughs> Uh, real, I look for I look forward to dinosaur barbecue out in Rochester when I drive to the training camp every uh, year. That's yeah. that's a thing. You getting, know? getting yourself a plate, a Ryan Thomas plate. Yeah, uh, exactly. Kids, if you're new to the show, guess what? Here we Here go, we go, folks. Go. We're in We're overtime. overtime. That's right. We're in overtime, and uh, that means that we went past our hour because we're unprofessional. Uh, luckily, Justice and the fan base put up with our nonsense. I would like to give you guys a big shout out because we just went over a thousand viewers live. So thank you so much for that. Um, we nice. are part of the Buff Fan Base Network. Go follow, love, subscribe, all of that. Uh, as part of that, sponsored by 26 Shirts, go to 26shirts.com. Give them all of your money. Del Reed and the gang got amazing things going on. And you can get fresh threads, look great and be helping a family in Western New York all at the same time. It's amazing. So go do that. Um, boys, my wife's not feeling super good. Uh, so I think we're going to end this somewhat on time right now. But I want to mm-hmm. run around here. I want to thank everybody for viewing and tuning in. But let's get our final thoughts and uh, end everybody's evening here. What do you think? Sounds good. Sweet, 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 sweet. All right, Jerry boy, give us your final thought. Well, obviously, Swank, we want your wife to feel better, so we're we're sending our quick healing thoughts your way. Um, Thanks. This is our fourth episode. We're having a great time. It, it it's not stopping. the The feeling of um, Buffalo Bills Mafia good feeling is ramping up again. You know, we have a good team coming up again this year, and I can't wait to see what this draft brings and. Guys, we we drafted Dalton Kincaid last year, and no one thought that was going to happen. So I, I, you can see all these mock drafts and who people are saying they're going to bring in, but nothing is certain until you see it that Thursday night. And it could be someone totally out of left field, Kyrie even, you know. So just be grateful for our Buffalo Bills' success these past couple of years and the continuation of that. And whatever draft pick number one they bring in, number two, number three, number four, root for them because they're on our team. And you never know what gem is going to come out. You never know what gold's going to come out of that. So um, let's be optimistic about this whole thing. And I can't wait to come back. Ryan, thanks for joining us tonight. Obviously, we're going to see you. you often again throughout yep. this whole year. But uh, next, Tuesday, <laughs> next Tuesday is just us three guys to talk Bills football. So come on back and. Let's have that conversation and congratulations to the winner of the tie dye. Just, you know, DM us and we'll get that stuff to you till next week, guys. Go bills till next week. Indeed. Go bills. Our team, man. Thanks so much for joining us, brother. It's always so fun to have you on. Um, Look forward to many more visits from you throughout the season. Why don't you hit us up with your final thought? Ooh, final thought, of course, always a pleasure to be on the K-Gun Report as well. Looking forward to just more interaction with you guys, social media, you know, as always. Um, anytime I get the chance to chat with you guys on a show or off of a show, it's always a treat for me. Uh, inching closer and closer to NFL Draft Day. And, of course, really enjoyed this offseason for the Buffalo Bills. I was really happy with the Curtis Samuel edition. I feel like he hasn't even reached his his full potential yet. He's never played with a quarterback like Josh Allen before. That's safe to say. So uh, really excited for him. Uh, very excited they were able to you know maintain some of the guys, keep some of the guys on the roster, re-sign Taylor Rapp, Daquan Jones, and a few others. Um, I think this has been a really good offseason, despite the shock that was – you know, Jordan Poyer leaving, Trey White leaving, all those guys. I feel like Brandon Bean's done a really good job kind of helping the team land on its feet heading into draft week uh, in the next three weeks here. And really looking forward to popping on that show with you guys. As you mentioned, that draft marathon show, uh, be sure to pop on and and uh, spit some fire takes. I know this draft is going to be crazy, as is every draft. Uh, one team will draft somebody that we'd be like dying laughing. We would have never <laughs> thought that team would have drafted that player. And hopefully that team's not the Bills. I don't think it will be. No. (laughs) No, I got faith. (laughs) Jets, Raiders. I heard the Jets cough. Could be either one. Patriots. Easily. (laughs) (laughs) 
Thanks, yep. brother. Appreciate you. Thank you. As always. Scoot him goop. What do you got, brother? Uh, I punched some numbers real quick when they're talking about the $850 million that the taxpayers had to pay. There's $10.7 million, 10 .7 million taxpayers in New York State. So that's a whopping $80 per taxpayer for this new stadium. Uh, I'll bite the bullet. I'll pay for that for a new stadium. Um, with all that being said, <laughs> the new the shows that are coming up, yeah, we mentioned them before. We It's the three of us next week. Uh, we have Dean Kindig, uh, Buff Fan Bases, a draft guru that puts in the hard work, guys. We can't wait to have him on the show. It was an awesome show last week or last year. Um, a lot of insight um, to what he has produced for the Buff Fan Base. So we have him coming in two weeks. Three weeks is the draft show. We won't be on that Tuesday. We'll be on that Thursday for the long for the long haul. And then the week after that, we have Rob Crippen from the Nickel City Crew coming in for the draft post draft reaction show. Um, I got fun, Rob. Yep, it'll be a fun week next week with the three of us. We will be doing our own mock draft. We will go through all the Bills draft picks uh, with the help of the Bills Mafia. You guys, the fans, your voice is going to be heard. We mm -hmm. want you joining in and telling us who you think. We'll have the screen up of people available. And uh, it's a fun thing to do. It really is. It's it's fun to play GM a little bit with a little bit of an explanation or just pulling from your back pocket. It, it's just fun to do. We have fun doing it. And uh, uh, like Swank said earlier, we do this for you guys. You guys have a voice on our show, and we like to hear it loud and clear. So welcome. If you're new, thank you for staying with us if you're not. And uh, let's continue this journey as a Bills Mafia. Let's go, Bills. Go, Bills. <laughs> Wow. Uh, nice job, man. The three of you guys really did a really nice job with that, man. I don't, I don't have a whole lot to say. Um, you know, just uh, good night, guys. Go Bills. No, I'm good just night. kidding. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, like that was what was that? That was, that, that was trigger. so that lame. Was not was so lame, like, is, dude. Is this the same show? Is this the same laptop? What am I, I about, doing here? I was about the message. I'm saying, man, you all right? <laughs> I know the um, wife's not feeling well, but we need a little, a little bit more than yeah. that. Give us a little more, dude. Like, <laughs> like, come on, what are you doing, uh, guys? We love what we do here, man. I, I was just telling Scott before we went on the air. Like for me uh, specifically, it feels like this is like the best start to a season that we've ever had. And I know the number, the numbers have been crazy. If you've been with us the last four weeks, these are the best numbers, up over a thousand viewers right now. Um, that we've ever had in the five seasons of doing the K-Gun Report. And uh, it, it's very surreal. Um, it's very humbling. It's it, it, it really just fuels the fire. I mean, th the show, I promise you, would be the same whether there was two people watching or 1,067 people watching um, because we are passionate about Buffalo Bills football. We're passionate about joking around and talking stats, and talking games, and talking draft, and talking free agency. Um, we're passionate about drinking beer and hanging out, you know. <laughs> it's just like who we are. So we would still do it. We did it when there was only three people watching. Um, mm -hmm. And even though it was a little more awkward back then, it still was the same show that you're seeing right now. So to have you guys all here supporting us, chiming in, throwing the questions, the comments, the jokes, um, it just means the world to us. And, uh, you know, here we are, April 2nd. You know, there, there's nothing going on <laughs> in, in the NFL right now except for a little bit of draft buzz where it feels like the draft's too far away, free agency's already hit, and you're so far away from playing games. And we have all of you guys here interested in what the hell's going on and just wanting something. Um, and, and we're the same way. We just want something to talk about as far as it goes with Bills football. So thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Um, and you can continue to be a part of this every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here, wherever the hell you're watching it. YouTubes, Twits, X, uh, Facebooks, uh, all those spots. Don't forget, go follow Buff Fan Base. Don't forget, go check out 247buffandammonium.com. Don't forget to go follow Ryan Thomas and the Thomas Takes Sports Podcast. Because, you know. Tomorrow night at 8. Hell yeah, right there. Tomorrow night at 8. <laughs> you don't even have to change your schedule, dude. Just use the same alarm you used for this show and then go watch right. the show. It's amazing. That's, that's, that's what I'll be doing, you know. In the season, Sunday sessions, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Hey, a little bit of Popping on every that. now and then. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Why I'm, not? 
I want I want uh Ryan Thomas live stream Italian kitchen. That's what I want. A little bit. Of oh little man, bit of that's this. coming. That Pizza is coming pie. for sure. Oh, yeah. I got a lot of ideas. Don't give me too many more. <laughs> uh, Make but, a Tony Soprano sub. Oh, it's coming. It's a gabagool. Hey. Gabagool. I've been running through the Sopranos again lately, and, oh. and it's so good. It's absolutely so good. Never, never gets old. No, never at all. Guys, we love the hell out of you. Thank you so much for letting us do this. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go Bills. Go! Did you hear the acoustics in this place? It's crazy, this new house. Bills! Yeah.